you you spoke about uh, always on always right um when i look back it feels like daunting task uh, with the advent of cloud the streaming applications and the advancements in ai um so the sls have significantly shortened Welcome to the first episode of the Fluid Intelligence podcast. When we discuss tech today, it feels pure magic. Remember Gen AI felt like a distant dream? Today it's the heartbeat of every innovation that is happening around and probably every conversation that we are going to have here. But here is a kicker. Do we really know what's coming next? Are we prepared for the future? But there is certainly one thing that we can do. Keep ourselves ready for the change. As tech leaders, We need to embrace fluidity and evolve our intelligence to stay relevant. The Fluid Intelligence podcast isn't just a series of conversations. It's a guide, compass, and probably your visionary partner in your journey of data and AI. Today we will talk about the world of production support engineers and how AI has infused into their daily operations. I'm Surya, Senior Director of Marketing at Faxpan, and I have with me Ritesh Ayer, Senior Director of Presales. By the way he is a champion of data mesh and AI for our enterprise clients. Welcome Ritesh for the Thanks, conversation. Thanks Surya, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Uh before we deep dive into the full topic, let's start with the primer. What is happening in the production support world? What incentive uh, actually drives them? Yeah. So Surya production support is uh, uh about systems being always on and always right. Mm. Uh with the advent of cloud the streaming applications and the advancements in ai um so the sls have significantly shortened mm. so if you look at earlier on it was um all the systems the expectation was that the systems could be always on and always right maybe in a couple of days right. or maybe a couple of hours but now the expectation is that it should be always on and right in a few minutes mm. so think of the amazon prime day sale so so many people log in right to buy products and if there is a server outage at that point in time uh the e-commerce could lose out they are customers to competition right at yeah. the same time from a user standpoint i wouldn't want downtime to hit me when i'm either checking out or when i'm paying because then i lose trust mm. on the platform uh think of another example in the us a lot of uh, uh uh retail pharmacies right so they have the system where the patients can directly interact with the pharmacists at real time um through sms right mm-hmm. regarding their prescription orders or status now if there is a lag uh, so i mean the pharmacist uh, so the pharmacy cannot afford that because it's pertaining to somebody's medicines or health recovery yeah. and so especially on. healthcare it exactly plays a lot more. exactly so uh so now the slas are now to the tune of maybe 5 minutes or at the mm. max 10 minutes right so in essence in summary if you look at it uh so production support is all about uh you know keeping pace with the advanced advancements in digital landscape and at the same time providing um seamless experience to the users you you spoke about uh, always on always right um when i look back it feels like daunting task even let alone the production support team right yeah uh maybe it actually feels like a f1 world of it that we <laughs> yeah. exist today true uh having said that uh just wanted to understand how has their role evolved over the years let's say 10 years back 5 years back and now surya that's a great question so gone are the days when uh the production support engineers used to be looked upon as mere troubleshooters hmm. uh the expectation is that now they are looked upon as strategic collaborators right so each one plays multiple roles uh in a team so they could be um as developers as testers as platform engineers and so on earlier on we used to have large teams of production support so 50 to 100 member team obviously depending on the the size scale and the complexity of the systems that we're looking at um but now clients have clients have started optimizing their teams so okay. if you look at it it's almost by 50% mm. right so that's because they have started adopting devops based pod model right so what does a pod look like it's a it's a team of dedicated roles with complementary skills 
right? Uh, it's complementary in the sense that uh, a single person plays multiple roles and you assume full ownership from right from the development to support. Okay. Right? So, so the expectation on these production support engineers have increased. So every production support engineer needs to needs to keep himself abreast with the latest technological advancements through mm-hmm. learnings, mm-hmm. continuous learning and certification. Uh, secondly, so they have to be at the forefront of automation. They have to prioritize customer experience and satisfaction. Right. And finally, they have to be seamless collaborators. Mm. So we at FactSpan, um, uh, Surya, we so we uh, uh, so we actually deploy data and AI engineers for the job. Right. Because we believe that they are the guys who are going to understand the system well. They can not not only solve all the intricate technical challenges but they can actually bridge the gap between the technology and the users. Okay, nice, interesting. Uh, you, you spoke about the DevOps world of production support. Um, while we said that it's daunting earlier, uh, but it also feels uh, logical in the current context of how the business is actually evolving today, right? Uh, having said that, again, in this context, um, help us understand what are the bottlenecks a daily uh, on a daily operations or production support engineer phases. Yeah, sure, uh, Surya. So uh, if you traverse 10 years back when there was no DevOps, uh, the bottlenecks and challenges were very different. Mm. So it was all about manual processes, for right. collaboration between teams and so on. Now with DevOps in picture, um, uh, so the bottlenecks and challenges are very different. Mm. Um, so people are, uh, so especially organizations, uh, are uh, facing a technology hammer. Right. There are too many tools out there, right? So be it open source, enterprise, cloud native, so there's a problem of choice. Correct. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, and they don't know what is the right tool for them. Mm-hmm. Now, if you look at a very big organization, there could be multiple verticals and each of those verticals end up choosing different set of tools for uh, monitoring, uh, your uh, uh, ticketing, your your problem management and so on. Right. So how do I get a seamless view or mm-hmm. an integrated view of the various issues um, so, so which are prevalent in an organization? Right. So that's become a challenge. Right. So within organizations as well. So there are pockets of technical debt or legacy infrastructure mm-hmm. which hinders um, efficient automation or proactive solutioning. Right. Um, and the last one, so last issue is no-brainer. So it's a skill gap, so which most of the organizations face. That is, how do I uh, identify, um, uh, train, and retain the right talent for the job? Right. So there is a problem of choice. There is the standardization that ha- needs to happen exactly. between systems and also between legacy and the modern systems. And now there's also a skill gap that, that is evolving with the way the industry is moving. Exactly. Right. That's true. Yeah. Let, let us come to the obvious uh, elephant in the room, which is AI. Uh, we we understand with the way DevOps evol- evolving into the production support world, things have changed a lot. But with now AI being featured in a lot more of these uh, scenarios, uh, how has AI played in diffusing some of the boundaries that exist between the hierarchical structure of the production support world? So firstly, Surya, I like the way you said uh, hierarchical structure, right? So, and that's true. Um, uh, so production support, uh, it, it, so it's a tiered framework. So where mm-hmm. we have got uh, multiple levels, L1, L2, and L3. L1 is supposed to do a lot of basic uh, support, or right. basic fixes, right? L2 does a little more complex and advanced fixes. And L3 does more specialized fixes in collaboration with the development team. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so, so yes, AI is empowering each of these um, layers, so each of these tiers, uh, and is blurring the boundaries between them. Right. So it's touching almost every aspect of production support. So be it uh, predictive maintenance of your platforms and infrastructure, or proactive monitoring of mm. your issues and raising alarms to the relevant teams, or it could be an NLP solution which goes through humongous log files and gives out what could be the possible root cause analysis. It could be a auto healing solution which, which could fix um, your, uh, uh, your known errors or known issues. Or it could be virtual digital assistance which could actually help the users uh, with their basic queries. Mm. So 
AI is completely transforming the production support landscape from being from being seen as very reactive to being very proactive. And it's also embedding into every operation of the exactly. production support engine. Exactly, that's true. In the earlier part of the conversation, uh, I remember you saying how data engineers today play a significant role in, in ensuring the systems being always on and always right. Uh, having said that, uh, how is Faxpan enabling this transformation for our clients? Yeah, so as you know, Surya, Faxpan is a, a data and AI company and um, we are enabling clients to be truly AI native. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our offering AI-led sustenance for production support where we help clients reimagine their production support operations, Right. Uh, help them build smart support factories through a very data-driven, AI-led sort of an approach, mm -hmm. which we call it as FACT IAP. Uh, so what does this framework focus on is three major things, uh, the three key elements of production support. That is, how can I make my monitoring intelligent? How can right. I make my system smart through automation? And how can I uh, improve efficiency through process enhancements? Right. So to help accelerate uh, the client's journey towards mm -hmm. building a smart support factory, we have got loads of assets and accelerators apart from various frameworks, models, and so on, as and best practices. Right. So uh, the first one being the integrated command center. So Surya, if you remember, I spoke about um, the challenge being technology hammer, hmm. and the challenge being that there is, uh, so I mean, there's a struggle to get an integrated view of all the issues across the estate, right, with multiple right. tools being there. So integrated command center rightfully solves that issue, where, uh, the production support engineer as well as the leaders alike can get a single view of anything and everything that you need for production support, be it the platform health, be it the, uh, the jobs, the pipelines, the incidents, the problems, mm. alarms, and so on, right? And uh, the beauty about this is that it's not just a dashboard. It is a control center. It's like a war room for right. production support where you can actually actively go and remediate any of these issues. Uh, so there are other features like, uh, so it proactively gives out some of these, um, uh, so I mean, there's a failure predictor which actually proactively gives out uh, what sort of issues would occur so that you can take uh, steps before the issue occurs. How, how does it predict? So, so it, it scans through your logs, it scans through your uh, jobs, your history, historical, historical data, jobs, right. historical okay. data, and accordingly predicts that. Okay. Similarly, we have got a KEDB, which is a known error um, base, right? So, no, it's known error database based uh, auto heal solution, which actually goes and fixes all the known errors which are okay. logged into the system. So, so it takes the knowledge base and then exactly. and works. And, and so this frees up a lot of time for the production support engineers and they can focus on something much better, right? In terms okay. of automation, in terms of improving the processes and so on. Um, so, and, and and no conversation can end without so without calling out generative AI, right? right? So, yeah. so we also have an, an LLM powered data ops co-pilot hmm. where uh, so where we are helping the production support guys to actually go and read through those humongous logs um, uh, and decide the uh, root cause analysis of that particular issue uh, triage the incidents and then proactively fix them so yes we have all these assets and accelerators in place and so and we've, we have deployed them for a few of our clients and we have seen at least around 50 to 60 percent improvement in the mean time to resolution and at least around 30 to 35 percent reduced incidents. Awesome. So if I understand correctly what you're saying is um, the two actually uh, monitors uh, issues real time, fixes them sometimes even before a production support engineer sees it but still logs, logs it and uh, also it learns over a period of time and uh, make itself much more effective as the learning keeps happening. Right. Yeah, exactly. So overall, I think it's a great tool probably uh, to improve productivity of the production support engineers and also reduce the resolution time of any of the issues that can happen in the future. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Interesting. Thanks, Ritesh. It was quite insightful. My Obviously, pleasure. I'm curious to know more. Uh, My I, pleasure, but I, Surya. I think we should keep it for another day. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. 
If you find it interesting, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any queries, comments, or, or even topic suggestions, uh, please feel free to write to us at contact at faxpan.com. Until then, look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Cheers.